Hello everyone, this is Hadrian. Thank you for watching. Let's play some more of the Long Dark in the Whiteout Challenge. So, I'm about to have to get some sleep here, but before I do, I want to make sure that I can take a moment to eat and restore some, some of my basic condition meters, and then I have a bunch of clothing items. If you thought I broke down a lot of clothing items in the last episode, there's about to be more. Alright, so I'm actually pretty good on those meters. I'm happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and start breaking some of this stuff down. It's going to take a while. This is going to be the one time that I'm actually glad the harvest button is at the top because I am just going to be going through and harvesting a bunch of these items that I don't need. So I just need to very I need to very quickly quick click through and take care of a lot of these clothing items. The the added benefit of this is going to be that as I get rid of some of these larger clothing items, um, they will no longer be in my inventory. The cloth will be in my inventory, and that's going to weigh me down a little bit, but not nearly as much as the full um, items would, these clothing items that I'm currently breaking down. So I just need to make sure I don't accidentally break down something that I need. Because my what I'm actually wearing is mixed in. I lay down right here. Yet I thought I'd ever wake up again. That was nice and dramatic. Okay, let's harvest these as well. Now I'm wanting to double check myself, make sure I still have everything I'm, I'm supposed to be wearing. I've got the new, new, thermal, new thermal underwear, new jeans, heavy wool sweater, insulated boots, expedition parka, don't be jealous, uh, worn sneakers, we're going to harvest those as well. So I'm pretty tired, I'm starting to lose condition to the fact that I'm tired. I've only got about five hours of darkness left, so I should probably go ahead and crash. And I'm still carrying so much. Holy crap. It's mainly because I've got a lot of wood on me. I've got a lot of wood, but I need to carry that wood back to the shelter. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to bring some water. That's another reason that I'm so weighed down. This will put us below 100 pounds at least. And then we definitely need to rest. Let's say eight hours of rest. Instantly recovered our condition there, as you saw. I don't like being idle for eight hours. The thought of that is making me cringe. All right, we're pretty thirsty again already and also hungry, so let's go ahead and eat these pinnacle peaches. And then I'm going to head back to the Quonset gas station with all the stuff that I'm carrying. We're going to drink this as well. It's going to be kind of a slow trip because I'm carrying a ton, but I found a bunch. And the thing is, I'm not always going to be able to move around this slowly. Wait, did I see bandage? Bandage, hello. Glad I double-checked that. Um, I'm not always going to be able to move around this slowly, you know, when, I've got, when I'm carrying a bunch of stuff, because sometimes I'm going to have just longer trips. It's going to take me longer to get places. So, but, but right now, we're very close to the area where our base camp is and where we need to have all of this food laid down. So if I find a house that has a lot of stuff in it, you bet I'm going to do everything I can to take all that stuff back with me. All right, I'm going to start heading that direction. If I can get lucky, I might even be able to cross the ice. All right, the wind is actually blowing in our faces right now, which is not perfect. I really wish it wouldn't do that. If I can get lucky, I should be able to just cross the ice. And that would be a bit of a quicker return. I'm actually not moving that slowly. I thought I would be moving a bit more slowly. The downside of me being 30 pounds encumbered, roughly, is that by the time I get... Oh, look, there's there's a deer right there. Oh, man, you probably have meat on you. That would be handy. But I have, I'm already carrying too much. The downside of me carrying so much, even this short distance, is it is going to wear me out. Yeah, it, the coast looks clear. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and just go cuz right across there is pretty much where we need to be. If you can see the dock in the distance and you can see the house, that's where we're headed. By the way, we have 28 days, 5 hours and 15 minutes remaining to gather all the rest of these materials. I will look at the list again in a second. Yeah, I am really this wind is really slowing me down. All right, if I sidestep like this, it does help a little bit. But if I, if I just try to walk forward right now, the game does not like it. This is rough. I don't like this very much. The wind is literally blowing in my face. For those of you who may have watched Against All Odds Season 1 on my channel a ways back, um, 
God, that ended. When did that end? In, in like January, February, somewhere at some point in there. Um, if you might have watched that, you remember that the wind was just blowing in my face in the final episode. It was almost like the game was trying to kill me. Anytime the wind blows in my face in the long dark, I'm just like, seriously, come on. <laughs> Okay, we need to get up to that house as well. There's plenty more to explore in Coastal Hot. Oh, there's a wolf. That's not good. 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 I need to be over here. I'm going to try and move towards this fishing hut as a waypoint to get away from the wolf and also as a spot to explore a little bit more and see if there's additional supplies because that wolf is right along the coastline and I need to give him a wide berth. There's also sometimes a bear hanging out. You can see that cave right in front of me there, middle of the screen. I don't see the bear, though, so I'm guessing that might be a higher difficulty level thing that I don't have to worry about as much right now, which is not a problem with me. Not a problem with me at all. Getting pretty hungry, but thankfully I've got plenty of food on me, and now that I have a knife, I have a means to open it, which is a nice change of pace. All right, I'm starting to see more snowflakes on the wind, which suggests we might have a storm incoming and there's a wolf right next to the dock in addition to the one that I'm trying to get around. That's not good. That's not good at all. Alright, so the weather is literally... It's doing what I was describing a moment ago. The weather is trying to put a roadblock in place and keep us from getting where we need to go. And it, you can see it's getting worse. The atmosphere is starting to get a little bit more... How cold is it? Yeah, 28 degrees. We're going to go in here. Sewing kit, that's good. Don't think we've gotten a sewing kit yet. Rifle cartridge, that's also good. That's on the list. Scrap metal, that's good. Well, that's going to be heavy. I don't need more heavy stuff. Alright, and... Nothing else in here. There's reclaimed wood, which technically I could pick that up too, I guess. Wouldn't be, wouldn't be much worse than what I've got right now, but... Alright, so here's the situation. I need to go way around now, into the blizzard, into this wind, while the weather's getting worse, and try and avoid these two wolves in front of me. I actually see multiple wolves. You have got to be kidding me. This feels scripted. This feels like the game is, is almost trying. Trying to stop me. I do have a knife on me, so, I mean, if I have to defend myself, I will. And I can. But I would prefer to be able to get around these wolves before they... Yeah, there's actually four wolves right in front of me, which is nuts. All right, we're actually getting pretty close to another fishing hut, so I'm going to take advantage of that opportunity, not only to get away from this wolf and to give him a really wide berth, but also just to visit this fishing hut and see if there's anything in there. If I wasn't so weighed down, I would go ahead and visit the, uh, the house up there. There's a couple of houses out on the lake. Or this is actually not a lake, this is a coastline. There are a couple couple of houses out on the coastline that are worth visiting. The weather's definitely getting worse. But thankfully the wind has started blowing not in our face. <laughs> so that makes it a little bit easier. Oh, that almost, almost sounded like a living creature that was coming for me. That was a little terrifying. All right. I'm also pretty hopeful that one of these fishing huts will have a, uh, a rifle in it, because they occasionally do. There's a tinder plug. That's good. Hubbard. Decent two. Cardboard matches. Flare. Oh, that's that's one heck of a cupboard. Hook. Line. Hunting knife. Another hunting knife. That's good. So if, if, a, if a knife is on the list then that is something I can check off because I have the knife that I'm carrying, but I also have the knife that I can now put down. All right, so there's one more fishing hut, and the wind is blowing me toward it, so I'm going to go ahead and go there and then go there because the Quonset gas station is right over there. So this is We're definitely taking the long way to get back, um, and it's getting cold too, and we're hungry. So not the best situation at all, but it's going to make do.
Almost there. See, we're getting pretty tired from carrying all this stuff around. This is a longer walk than it was supposed to be, so this is going to affect my mobility for the remainder of day two. Thankfully, I think I've made pretty good progress so far. But the issue is that this storm is going to keep getting worse, and at the same time, I'm going to have to keep traveling farther and farther through it in order to gather all the materials that I need. There's a magnifying lens, that's good. Reclaim wood, that's good too. Rifle cartridge, that's also good. Some cloth is good. New tomato soup is good. Another rifle cartridge is good. Okay, lots of stuff in here. Too much to narrate. <laughs> Newsprint, all right. And nothing else. All right, so we're gonna head this direction. Let me just look around, make sure there's not a wolf. There is not. I'm gonna move towards that rock right in front of us and then go kind of behind it and to the right. And the Quonset gas station will be on our left. And we can drop all this stuff and then check our list and see how our progress is doing. And then maybe get some rest and go out uh, and visit one of these houses before the uh, storm gets too bad. more of the Lawn Dark's masterful soundtrack. I am being intentionally quiet right now because I like to let pieces play when, uh, when they start, but I think this one's mostly run up. There's a car not far away that direction, but I'm way too weighed down and I'm starting to get hungry, so I just, I want to get back and I want to catch my breath for a bit. Literally and in game. Almost there. feel like, aside from the challenges I just mentioned, we're off to a pretty good start in the Whiteout Challenge. I feel like we are. But I might be wrong about that, you never know. We are... Right, there's our... There's our destination, right there. So close, and yet so far. The wind is actually blowing in our face a little bit again. So I wonder if, now that the, the blizzard's coming in, I wonder if this, this storm that we're seeing right now is actually going to stop. Because from what I understand, the blizzard just slowly sets in. Day after day after day. So what, what we're seeing right now from this killer storm being on the way... You know, this this might just not stop, which is crazy to think about. Thankfully, we are warm enough with our current clothing, which is very, very fortunate. Okay, we have arrived, finally. All right, and we're going to be walking a lot more slowly. Good lord, look how slow we're walking. Have I found a pry bar yet? No, I haven't. Is there nothing in any of these drawers? There's nothing. Okay, fine. Just so weird to be in a location in the Law Dark and there to be and for there to just be nothing. Alright, so I'm gonna drop, once again, everything on the floor. I will go ahead and drink this coffee. That's gonna help our thirst and give us a few calories. That rancid rabbit probably needs to go outside before it decays much farther, but first I need to drop this wood because this wood is what is weighing me down. I'm also carrying scrap metal. That's too much. also need to organize this stuff because I just have too much stuff on me. Okay, so flares also are very, very heavy. I can put this lantern fuel down, because that's part of what's on the list. 
with this hunting knife down, that should hopefully be on the list. I wish there were indicators. I'm going to go ahead and put these rifle ammunition, this rifle ammunition down as well. Okay, let's look at our list, shall we? All right, so we've got five days of food out of 15. So we're a third of the way there as far as food goes. We have six out of 20 hardwoods, four out of 30 reclaimed woods. Not a lot of sticks, no tinder, but we could get tinder by breaking down newsprint that we found. Bandages, also easy. Matches, I have plenty of matches. I can drop those. We haven't found the rifle yet, but... Uh, oh, potable water, that's the other thing. That's definitely the other thing. Let's go ahead and drop... Let's drop a whole gallon. All right, so that's that. Not really organized yet, but I'm going to wait until a little bit later to start putting some of this stuff up on shelves. Make it look a little prettier, because for now, I want to go back out and keep exploring. Yeah, see all these matches? So now let's look at our list, because that might be... Yeah, those are our matches. <laughs> That's more than enough matches. I can actually pick some of these back up. All right, so we have definitely fulfilled our match requirement. Ah, uh, kerosene. Yeah, we're going to need more of that. But potable water, we're almost halfway there, which is good. All right, let's look at our current situation. Yep. I don't think a knife was on the list, which is unfortunate, but what can you do? All right. Clothing. I'm still carrying a bunch of extra clothing items. Let's go ahead and break this down. I need to repair everything I've got before I go anywhere else. I picked up so much clothing because I just I wanted the cloth. Also, I can make bandages with it, so that's going to fulfill the bandage requirement. Okay. Seven hours of daylight left. Almost done harvesting all my extra stuff. Wait a minute. All right, yeah. Just making sure. I had a 73% condition too. Gonna. Okay. You're hungry. I understand. I'm gonna. I'm gonna help you with that in just a second. But right now, I just I need to get rid of all this extra stuff. All right, we're gonna harvest this as well. We're almost done. Still going to find more clothing items out in the world, but there's just so many clothing items out in Pleasant Valley. And there are going to be more. All right, that's everything. So what can I repair? Let's go ahead and repair these boots. It's going to take some time, but it's worth it to have 100% condition there. And then what else? I think everything else is, is probably probably good. So now what we need to do is do some bandages. All right, that's two bandages right there. Do some more. I think we need 10 bandages, so I can fix that problem right now. Damn. That's four. So and I've picked up some bandages too. I know you're hungry, we're gonna get to that. I don't wanna starve my character here, but I just I'm trying to work hard at getting some of the items on the list checked off. So definitely starving, definitely thirsty, definitely tired. Probably too tired. Well, actually, no, not too tired. We can rest for a bit and then head across to one of those houses across the lake. All right, so hungry, are you? Let's go ahead and drink, first of all, some of the water. And then let's go ahead and... I don't need salty crackers. The peanut butter would be the smartest thing to do. That's a, that's a lot of calories, but we need it. We need it right now. All right. Now, I'm going to rest for... Well, actually, you know what? No, I'm not going to rest. I'm going to go right back out, because now I've got lots of room in my inventory. All my stuff is fully repaired. Oh, you know what? I can put some of this antiseptic down, because I found so much antiseptic, but I don't need this much, and the stuff is really heavy. Same with the water purification tablets. Uh, the emergency stem I'll keep on me. I think let's go ahead and drop 10 bandages, and that should... Fulfill our bandage requirement. There it is. Pretty good. All right. Got to keep moving. 
we need to get to one of those houses across the lake. Which is where we're going to go. Oh, weather's actually better. I wasn't expecting this. So that answers the question. The storm is coming, but it's not... It's not already going to be as bad as, as I feared. It will be a little bit more manageable than that, at least. Alright, so I just need to be careful as I step out onto the ice here, because... There could be a wolf nearby. But thankfully, visibility is not awful. So I'm going to make my way toward that fishing hut on the left, kind of between the two of them, actually. And the island where I need to go, I think that's actually the silhouette of it in the future. Or in, in the future, in the, <laughs> in the distance. Um, but I'm not quite sure. No, I don't think it is. I think that's just a cloud silhouette in the distance. But we will see the island soon enough. It'll pop into view. You don't have to worry about falling into the ice when you're this close to shore. The game warns you when the ice is getting thin. FYI. If you're new to the long dark or watching this for the first time, just curious how the mechanics work. It definitely does warn you. All right, the silhouette is getting stronger, though. So maybe that is, in fact, the island that I'm going for. Or maybe I'm looking towards the wrong direction. Oh, that's what it is. I'm looking towards the wrong direction. That's Those are the mountains in the distance. So I was walking the wrong way. I need to be walking more this way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, that makes more sense. My bad. My sense of direction was way off. I was walking out towards the, the mountains on the edge of the zone, which would have eventually gotten me somewhere, <laughs> but uh, not where I really wanted to be. But the good news is the way that I took definitely kept me clear of any wolves. Unintentionally, but but still, that's, that's good. All right, so there's a house up at the top of this place, and I'm going to scavenge it, and then I will also probably rest here. If the fog clears, I might go ahead and visit the other island house, if possible. You know, one thing that's just occurred to me, if the storm is going to get worse and worse, I need to go ahead and make some of the long treks now. Like, I need to maybe, I don't know, would I go to Mystery Lake or Desolation Point? I'm thinking about locations where I could possibly find a gun. Um, yeah, we're getting close to the bear cave. I certainly hope the bear is not here, because if he is, I'm screwed. But, yeah, I, I feel like I actually probably need to make a longer trip pretty soon, because it's this stuff that's close that I can manage, you know? While, okay, it looks like, oh no, those are just bones. It's definitely a bear cave. Is there anything in the bear cave? Or just bones. Yeah, it's just bones. Okay. No bear, though, which is nice. There are some birds circling, so I want to go towards that and see what's going on. But yeah, I, I've just realized that, you know, if this storm is indeed going to get worse and worse as time goes by, I'm going to need to travel sooner than later. So yeah, you're going to see me prob probably making a trip to... Uh, I'm kind of feeling Desolation Point right now. There's a dead body. Let's see what he's got on him. Probably the toughest item on the list is the rifle. Because you never know where one of those is going to spawn. And when you have a sandbox game and you know how to survive in the long dark, you're not worried about it because you know that you'll eventually find one. You know that you'll eventually find like four or five rifles. But when you have a limited amount of time, it's an entirely different ball game because you don't know where that item is. Basically, I mean, it's it's not a complicated concept. I don't need to explain it. You have a limited amount of time to find something that has a random spawn location and is somewhat rare. So that time limit just changes so much. Like I said, playing the Lawn Dark with a sense of objectives. Here we are at the myth misanthropes, misanthropes homestead. There we go. Words. Um, playing the Lawn Dark with a sense of direction is such a refreshingly different way to play it. I'm enjoying it immensely. Okay, let's go ahead and whip the, uh, the lantern out here, because it's a little dark. I know I talked about being able to see in the dark, but I just, I feel like you guys, um, 
It'd be a little tougher. There's a flare under the couch, as usual. There's almost always a flare under this couch. If not always. Almost always. Orange soda, pinnacle peaches, go in the fridge. So similar to the other houses we've looked at already. Okay, anything in the cabinet? Oh wait, there's some dog food down there. Makes me wonder if there was dog food in one of the other places that was like this house. Anything in the microwave? Nope. Alright, I feel like it's bright enough in here. Let me... Yeah, we're good. Tin of sardines. No granola bar. So yeah, definitely finding more food. Which I knew would happen when we came out here. Coastal Highway is just replete with food. So much. Banged up pinnacle peaches, that's excellent. I'm gonna try and pick up as much as I can from this house and a few more of the neighboring houses out on the ice, just locations out on the ice, and then make my way back to the uh, gas station again and drop stuff off. I'm gonna try to do. Moldy peanut butter, hey, that's a good replacement uh, for our peanut butter that we already ate. Turn on the light just to make sure I'm not missing anything. I need to look through all these cabinets, look through the oven, look through the fridge, look through the freezer. Very good. Alright, now we're going to go upstairs. More newspaper. That's good for Tinder. More accelerant. What I need to find somewhat soon, in addition to finding the rifle, is something that's not quite as rare, but still is challenging to find when you, when you don't know where they're going to be and you have a time limit. And that's the hatchet. The hatchet can be used for breaking down all the limbs that I find out in the world much faster than I would break, break stuff down otherwise. All right, cool. We're going to take this water. Yay, toilet water. <laughs> oh, haven't gone through these yet. Thought I did, but... I mean, can you blame me? I've been through several houses that look just like this. All right, worn insulated boots. That's good. I'm almost to a point where I'm going to stop picking up clothes as I get them, because I just... All right. oh, wow, another Expedition Parka. Holy crap. So I've found two Expedition Parkas now. They're, they're very... I feel like they're pretty common. Maybe not very common, but pretty common. If you fully explore Coastal Highway, it was just amazing that I found one in Episode 1. But I do feel like they're, they're pretty common now in Coastal Highway. Coastal Highway is definitely where I found them in my last couple of sandbox playthroughs. Well, at this point, I think since we're almost at the 30 minute mark, I will go ahead and cut this episode here and we will continue with the Whiteout Challenge in the Lawn Dark in the very next episode. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I upload new episodes in the Whiteout Challenge every day at 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, which is GMT minus 4 for those of you not in the States. And comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think and I will see you in a bit.